right, so we're going to play Leisure Suit Larry 2, looking for love in several of the wrong places. So this is a copy protection screen. Uh, there's a bunch of women you can go through, and there's different phone numbers for them. They all look kind of similar in most regards, like she might have a necklace but missing earrings, that type of stuff. If you put in the full number, it gives you the intro. If you do 0724, which is Outlaw's birthday, it gets you into the game but passes the intro. Uh, for the first time playing Leisure Suit Larry 2, I think it's very important to see the intro. So we're going to put in the number 3425, which is the correct one, and here's the intro. So I'll just be quiet for this part. Mostly. Sometimes I can't help but talk. Because who doesn't love the sound of my voice? So one thing I will say is, I told you I couldn't keep quiet, one thing I will say is um, after the intro, I did speed up the gameplay. Um, originally the video is three hours long, so if you watch my non-commentary version, it's three hours long. No one wants to hear me talk for three hours. So what I've done is basically super increased the speed in which the game plays in the video. So this is still part of the intro. We see Larry mowing the lawn, which is more work than I think we've ever seen him do. And this beautiful woman shows up and says, Larry says, Eve, baby, you're finally home. I've been worried sick about you. And she says, who are you? And why are you mowing my lawn? Why, Eve, don't you remember me? It's me. Larry! Larry Laffer! We met in the hot tub and lost wages at the end of the Land of the Lounge Lizards just before my big finale, wink wink, nudge nudge, at the end of the game. So right there we're uh, being told who this woman is and how, if this is the first time you're playing Leaf Suit Larry, uh, what the relationship of her house and her and you and where you're at. Uh, essentially says, what are you doing here? And you, as Larry say, you know, hey, two people in love, don't they move in? And she says, move in, you creep, you got five minutes to get everything out of the house. And then she says, Brutus on guard, which is the dog that we see in Leash Suit Larry 1, where if you stand still for too long, he pees on you. So it's kind of good that now you know the dog's name. I wonder if you actually typed it in Leash Suit Larry 1, if it would know it, but I doubt it. Anyway, she says, I'll be back in five minutes, and you won't. And Brutus proceeds to pee on your leg. Sigh. And it says, gee, Larry, looks like it's the way everything used to be. You had a beautiful woman, beautiful home. Now you're basically in Los Angeles on the streets. Now we skip over here. This is why I say that the introduction is also important because not only do we know why Larry is no longer with Eve, we see what the main story has to do with. And it has to do with non tonight Island. And we see a heavy fog come over the island. It talks about how the locals are used to it. But what is the sinister purpose of this fog? Well, we're about to find out as we see a helicopter arrive. Now the helicopter just comes along over the island. Uh, what is the smoke screen cover for? But some evil force so sinister, so sly, so slick, the mere mention of his name brings fear to the heart of the staunchest man. No nookie. Alright, so it's on non no non tonight island and no nookie. We see the waterfall stop, the helicopter flies into the cave, the cave door seals, the waterfall resumes, and the fog dissipates. So clearly something sinister is at hand. Inside his volcanic mountain fortress, the dirty doctor is designing the most disgusting of his dastardly deeds. And we see Dr. Nodoki. 
is complaining about a woman. Where is she? Why, uh, why is she so slow? She should be here by now. So clearly he has an evil plan. over to his radio saying calling LA calling LA yes sir a female responds is everything in place for the transfer he asks everything she snaps back he smiles a broad smile excellent LA keep me informed and remember no mistakes So evil plan is afoot and he calls it LA which we can assume is Los Angeles. And it even says here, what's he gonna do with Los Angeles? What sort of transfer? What could it be? Fan me, he shouts, and now. Now feed me grapes and keep them coming. So with Leisure Suit Larry 2, it is my favorite of the Leisure Suit Larry series. Uh, I do not have it as memorized as Leisure Suit Larry 1, and this game taught me that uh, several times. Um, as I said, this is going to speed play, so what we're going to do is we're going to go in the garage, and if you do look, you'll find a dollar bill stuffed in the pants, and you're going to want to get that dollar bill. So if you look at the street name, you'll see she's on Ascot Place and Balls Road. So I don't have the map area laid around, so I am going to wander around for a little bit before I actually find what I'm looking for. With the dollar, what you have to do is you have to find a, uh, a liquor store, basically. And I'll first go look in this hole. Talks about seeing people play police quest, go over there and you pee, and then someone watches you pee, so it's weird. Anyway, you go to the liquor store, go in here. We have a dollar. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually buy a lotto ticket. Oh, and here's where if you do 0724, it goes right through. Anyway, we're gonna buy a. Uh, first, we're gonna look at the dollar, and then we're gonna buy a lotto ticket. So, you have to go up to her, and you buy a Lucky O Bucko lottery ticket. And notice that she says, have a good day. And it doesn't matter what numbers you pick here. You're going to have to pick six different numbers, or you're going to have to pick a series of three numbers between 100 and 999, six times. And uh, it's not going to matter what you pick. So the next thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to find where the studio is, which is K-Rod. And we're going to turn this in. When we talk to this woman, we look at her, she looks... In that picture she looks like a meth addict but whatever so you try to talk to her try to ask her about the tv show ask her about her job ask her about anything and uh, she doesn't care so we're, what we're going to do is we're going to give the ticket to the woman and ask hey am i the lucky winner and she says here's you know i forgot my glasses but here's the numbers 953-880-490-295-285-482 so you're going to want to write those down because those are random and then you're going to put those in as the numbers that you have so you're basically lying to her and she says yeah those are the winning numbers and she opens the uh, room to the or opens the door to the green room and so you look at both of these things and they make mention of a horse which is uh, by the graphical artist of this game i'm not sure what that reference is but eventually someone comes in and says hurry up so you stand and you go over there, assuming this might be the lotto show, but it's clearly not. It's the dating connection show. So we're going to sit down and uh, see if we can get a date. So our guest is Biff Barf. And our bachelorette is Barbara Bimbo. So it's going to go through bachelor one, bachelor two, and bachelor three. 
And when it goes to Batra 2, it's supposed to be you. Uh, it totally gives a different person's name. You try to correct them, and they don't care. And so now it's time to play. So essentially we're going to go through here and we're going to sit through her questions and responses. She will ask Larry uh, the same questions that she'll ask the other bachelors. And pretty much no matter what you type, even if you type almost word for word the same line as the other person, she'll say, ooh, who let that person in? Or what a jerk. So there's nothing here that you can actually say to win her over. Pretty much no matter what you say is horrible to her. So eventually by the second response I start, when she asks about what flower and insect, I said something like, I'd be a wasp so I can sting you in the face. <laughs> so here it is here. <laughs> and actually it doesn't, again, it doesn't matter what you say. Um, she pretty much knocks down anything you say. Even though he talks about being a bee and then show you his stinger. So she says two, as in, I would also like to make a choice two, T O O, but then Biff uh, <laughs> interprets it as selecting uh, number two. So you win a romantic cruise with her, spending a solid month together uh, with Barbara Bimbo. And you get all these like supplies and stuff that you've won and uh, she tries to say that it's not what she wants and he cuts her off saying yeah 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 okay so as you walk out he says you know well none of us saw it coming but it looks like she picked you so what you're gonna want to do is sit back down because we still have to go to the lotto ticket so here she comes it says where have you been try to explain she doesn't care so you go over here and now we're gonna go spin the wheel for the lotto he tells you to hurry up because the show's already running late you give her a spin click 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 and you win one million dollars so with that you get a million dollar check so it seems like Larry's luck is uh, turning for the better. Just want to cruise with a woman, just want a million bucks. What could go wrong? All right, so we're going to leave. So now we have to find somewhere to break a million dollars, which we will do by buying a bikini bottom. Again, I don't have everything mapped out as to where everything is. And if you look at the woman, she actually looks attractive. You find Italian women sexy, but then you find all women sexy. So if you look at the suits, it says, cost you a mortgage, and you see her wrapping her fingers, waiting for you. So you look at the swimsuit, it's $100,000 on sale. So we pick out one, try to pay for it. Uh, she says go to the front of the desk, which is super picky. But now we're gonna pay for it here. And she says, that's six. And she starts counting it by hundreds and you say, I don't have that kind of time. The cruise is about to leave. So now we have the bathing suit. Now that we have the bathing suit, keep in mind that this is now timed. Once you get the ticket for the cruise, it is on a timer and that cruise ship can leave without you. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to sit down and we're going to get a haircut. And this is the theme throughout this game of getting your hair done. So he starts dreaming of what he would look like running naked on the beach and the guy says you certainly have weird uh, 
daydreams, and then he even does dream about the dog peeing on his leg, gets a little trim, and he looks exactly the same. So there you go. Pay him some money, and off you go. To be honest, I'm not even certain if that haircut is needed for there because you don't get anything from it. You, you get points, but nothing else. And now you can see the garage is closed and uh, what you're going to want to do is look in the trash because what we need is the passport, which is in the trash can. And it says you now smell like a combination of roadkill and dollar bills. So now we're gonna cruise around. Again, I can't remember where anything's at. Some of the stuff we're gonna need for the cruise is stuff like sunscreen. We're gonna get this big gold drink because we're gonna need that as well. This is probably one of my favorite things in this game where it talks about it's gonna take forever to fill. And you decide to put it in your pocket. I love how they just, you know, it's an adventure game. We're just gonna put this soda and can't remember oh you know what actually I think the sunscreen is not at the liquor store uh, what we're gonna actually do is get the sunscreen at, there it is, this store. So. I don't remember where the sunscreen is here. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna type get sunscreen because I can't remember where the hell it is. Apparently can't ask him about the sunscreen. So it's right here, right kind of like in the middle. I don't know how, other than later on in the game getting a sunburn, how you know to get the sunscreen there. So you pay him for the sunscreen and you, we're going to go ahead and leave there because I think that's the last thing we need from there. I wonder what the reference to the Brown Derby is. Because there is nothing that we do there. Now we go to this store. And I'm wondering if I've taken too long. Look at the woman. You find Latin women sexy. But then you find all women sexy. And so seeing that she's Latin, you try your hand at uh, being suave and speaking El Espanol. But, uh, you poorly translate your words and uh, apparently what you don't know is you're saying a secret code that she is expecting to hear and it talks about the microfish containing the secrets to the recent United States superconductor and she hands it to you so now that you have that you say "Ooh, what an interesting car but then there's also that guy He's right next to the car. And he says he starts to follow. Dun, 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 dun. Wait a minute. What's this? How can that be you? You just walked off the other screen. And that's you going in there. And she says, you, what are you doing here again? And he says, what are you talking about? I've never seen you before. What do you mean? You just walked out. And then they realize... There's another guy that looks just like Larry Laffer in this game. And she's given him, given you, the uh, information when she was supposed to give it to him. And now things have gone bad. So now they know that they have to look for someone that looks like you. 
So we resume with you walking, and some dude is like, hey, would you like a hit of the old bird? Don't do it, because you will die. So now we should be good to talk to the man. And we're going to get on the cruise. And he makes mention of like everything is a free pass. Blah, blah, blah. And you start walking up. And just as you do, it looks like you're there just in time. And you have this vision of a woman who ironically does spare a striking resemblance to passionate Patty, who we'll see in Leash Suit Larry 3. Well, technically we see her... Well, I won't say anything. So now we're on the cruise. So, this part is a pain. Get a note. Gotta get the fruit from there, you're gonna open the door. Here you're going to meet Barbara Bimbo's mother, uh, because apparently Barbie was feeling sick, so she, her mother snaked it and pretty much wants her way with you. Her, her husband has passed away. Rest in peace. Uh, there she is, chewing some bubblegum. So what we have to do is, from her room, there's a sewing kit and you're gonna see here if you get caught she basically gives you SNM to death and you can see I'm trying a thousand times to try to get this sewing kit and she keeps coming to the room so I'm gonna do something different I'm gonna change into my swimming trunks or change clothes so now we're in our swimming trunks and we're just gonna go up to the pool Right, you're gonna use sunscreen, get some points for that, sit on the chair. And a beautiful woman walks up saying, hey, why don't you come back to my place? Now it seems too easy. Nah, it's because it is. It's another KGB agent trying to kill you. So don't get up and don't follow her. If you do, you die. So what you can do is you're gonna get in the pool, you're gonna swim, you're gonna take a breath, and then you're gonna dive. And then you're gonna get the bikini and swim to the top. You wanna take a note of the guy in the pool, buzzed hair and pink shorts. I'll say why later. So we're gonna go back to our room, change clothes again. We're gonna save, because now we have the bikini top. And we're going to try this whole thing again with her. And it's utterly random. If you can get to the drawer, open it, look in it, get a sewing kit, and get out as quick as you can. You always want to save before you go in that room. That way it's a quick, easy restore if she does show up when you get to the drawer. And like I said, you can see that I tried probably 10, 15 times before I decide to go try something else and come back to try. So now we're gonna cruise around, check out the rest of this cruise ship that we're on. Go up here and we can sit at the bar, talk to the bartender. You don't wanna get anything from the bartender. He will try to kill you because he's part of the KGB as well. So we're gonna go over here and we notice that there's some spinach dip. And we get points for it, but to be honest, I don't know what the spinach dip is for, because we're going to end up tossing it later. So other than it being there to kill you, uh, I don't know what it's for. So once again, sit in the chair, and this time he's going to give us the jimmy, which is essentially he took off the top of the mop and put it on her head as a wig. Go ahead and take that off. But that is a clue of what you're going to do with that later. So if you go in here on the bridge, you want to stay in the back because you want to be able to hit that switch when the time is right. 
we're going to pull the lever, and it basically starts the drill for the ship, uh, the emergency boats. So we go back up here, jump on lifeboat, okay. Siren whales, the lifeboats go down, and only ours dispatches. Now I can already tell you, I've already messed up. There's a few things I've done wrong. I'll wait till it says the first one. Boom. We didn't put on sunscreen after we got out of the pool. So change clothes. This is after I've got the sewing kit and everything like that. So all I need to do is put on sunscreen and uh, go pull the lever again. So we just need to walk out of the pool, use sunscreen, boom, get points for it, go back. Back to the room and change clothes. I wonder if Larry can actually <laughs> get off the boat in his swimming trunks. So now we have to do the mop thing again because I did forget to save after that. So we pay ten thousand dollars for the mop and take it off again. Now we get the dip. Again, I still don't know what the dip is for. I can't remember because it does get tossed. So I saved it, pulled the start thing. I'm going to go back to the ship. I'm going to get in the lifeboat. Larry does this little jump. And down go the boats. Now I have the sunscreen, but I can already tell you I've messed up again. Because what happens when you're on the boat, I'll tell you once we get to that day. One, two, three, four. Sunscreen's there. Ooh, must be hotter today. So basically our head catches on fire. So we need something to cover our head, which is the mop. So we're going to restore, go back here, pull the lever. Go back up here. Jump in the boat. Alright, you're going to want to throw the dip as soon as you can, and you're going to want to wear the wig before you exit the screen. Because what happens if you make it past the wig, which is day five, you get hungry on day six or seven, and you eat the dip, which has gone bad, and it kills you. So day one, day two, day three, day four. And talks about, boy, it's hot. It must be hotter today. Thank God you wore the thing. It talks about how thirsty you are. That's where we drink the soda. And this is where you go fishing. And we make it to day nine and ten. Ten is the last day in which a rough storm strikes. And you cling on to pieces of your of your raft and you make it to land. Ugh. Now remember the guy who was in the pool? Blonde hair, pink shorts. I swear that's him. Anyway, so it talks about how you've managed to escape the KGB, and you're now on an island. So you take a look, see what's made it with you, survive the seas. Alright, so we're going to walk over here, and there is a nude woman on the rock. And she's talking to you, but do not go with her, because again, She's KGB and she will try to kill you. So in this jungle scene, it's going to go through this whole bit. You want to get those flowers. You'll need them later. But he'll go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Um, I'm just going to do this for the first time. But if you want to, once you get those flowers, you can literally type exit. And then he'll find a quick exit out of it instead of doing this whole animation of climbing the tree, looking through bushes, falling out of the tree. Um, appearing behind a peacock, that type of stuff. And eventually, if you do not type exit, he will actually get faster at getting out of there. 
and it does make a comment of uh, it being he's getting faster at getting out. And you end up at a restaurant. So you talk to the man, and you basically explain who you are, and he says, go ahead and have a seat. So you sit down. And he lets in Mr. and Mrs. Rich. And then he lets in Mr. and Mrs. Famous. And then he lets in Mr. and Mrs. Gates, who we should all know. Then he lets in Mr. and Mrs. Leech. Starting to see a theme here. And then Mr. and Mrs. Williams, who we can assume is Ken and Roberta, even though they all look exactly alike. And he says, oh, I'll let you in. I'll set up a table for you. They set up a quick table. And once again, uh, have a nice day is said throughout the game. You sit down, you look food, it says, oh, food's attached. Do not eat the food. You will die because it is KGB. So you're gonna go over here, you're gonna get the knife, and you can get some cheese. And as soon as you enter, if you want, once again, like I said, what you can do once you get those flowers that are there that I've already gotten, you can actually type the word exit, and he will actually exit out of this scenery uh, much faster. Now we're at a room, so we're going to look at the tables, we're going to get the matches. Makes a joke how Larry found his match. And a girl comes in and says, was everything um, to your satisfaction? You can look at her. Uh, you don't want to say no, because uh, if you say no, uh, she will try to make it up to you. Then her brother comes in and kills you. So get some soap. And you can see as soon as I walked in, I typed exit, and you find a shortcut. Once again, it's another barber shop. Is laundry detergent on your head. And as you can see, it looks like it works. And then he calls you Blondie, you ask why, and your hair turns blonde. Once again, he says, Have a nice day. So we're going to exit. And we're going to end up back at the beach. And I actually accidentally clicked onto the screen. We want to actually eventually go back to the beach because we need something out of the beach. Because it does mention that we only have half a bikini because the beach has what we need. Where the woman was talking to us, and unfortunately it cycles that same pattern of rooms every time, so you have to wait. But if you type exit, again, it gets you there faster. So where the woman was, you'll see now there's bikini bottoms. So we have bikini top, now we have bikini bottom. So now we're going to go here to the exit. Exit. Go back here, change clothes. You put the soap in the bikini top so it makes it look like you have boobs. And now what we're going to do, we need the, um, now we need to go here barber because now not only do we get the, got the hair done but we're also going to do a body wax because Larry still looks like a dude with the body hair so wham so now Larry has bikini blonde hair it's long um, he's waxed the hair we should be good to go KGB guy is there. If you had messed up anywhere else, he would catch you. And this thing, the, 
I don't believe there's any way to die. It's just extremely annoying because you keep falling off. And what it does is every time you fall off like that, it gives you a point for surviving. However, by the time you get to the end of this, it takes away the free points that it gave you. And now before you go through it, you want to wear your suit again. And to get past these KGB guys, you give them flowers and they walk away to contemplate um, everything. And the way this works is no matter what line you get into, uh, there's always someone moving into the next line. So there's no way to actually ever get through here. So if you were to go here, the line will go elsewhere and the line that you're in never moves forward. So if you look woman, you find Daventry women are beautiful. Well, clearly this is Rosella from King's Quest IV, although she has the same pictures and calendar as all the others. You would think that, at least for her, they would have at least put naked men up there, but no. Alright, so nothing you can do. You can go over here, talk to man, may I see your passport? Show him your passport. And he makes a comment about it. And he talks about, let's see what you have for your inventory. And it goes through all of your inventory items. And he says, yeah, you need to be getting rid of that knife. And you lie and say you will. So what you're going to do is you can go through every single bag and there's comments for everything. Sometimes it's like you find nothing. You'll see guns going by, but what you want to watch for is a bomb and it will be in a green suitcase. You'll see that little things like some little messages will go by and you can actually grab them and see. And there it is. It's a bomb. So you say, let's take it outside. It says, look out. I have a bomb. No one seems to panic. No one seems to care. You imagine how great of a hero you will be, pretty much. How you're going to end up on a bunch of talk shows. You'll have this great life uh, by saving all these people. Boom. Well, that's certainly one way to clear it. And you talk to the man, he seems unimpressed. So, say, may I buy a ticket? And it says, you're unlike there's only one seat left. When you ask why everyone was in line, he says they were in there for a bathroom. And then he asks a series of questions about what type of seat you want and what you want, and you just hit enter a bunch of times. Once you get your ticket here, it is timed. He'll even, he'll even let you know you have exactly one minute. So I'm going to go here, show passport, ask, did you get rid of the knife? Of course I did, which is a lie. Go around here. Look sign. Oh, we got a little special over here. So you know that's something that you're going to want. Rarely is something in a Sierra game for no reason at all. So you order it and you wait. So the this is one of those times where uh, if you eat the food, you just die. And it's not a KGB guy, it's just a bobby pin is in there. And uh, it will kill you. And there's literally almost no way to know it's there unless you say, look in food. 
And I just realized I made a mistake because I did not get the parachute. So let's do this again. There's the bomb, so now we have to run back outside, do this whole thing all over again. Once again, talks about how you're going to be a great hero. Boom. Since the airline ticket is timed, let's do a few other things first. Order the food. I look in food and you find the pin. Get the pin. If you look at the vending machine that says flight insurance for our bucks, you get it. It's a parachute. You automatically pick it up, so that's good. Can you go back? Now we're going to buy a ticket. And again, it's a series of those questions. Have a nice day. Go in. You show her the ticket. It's called the Mile High Club. She recognizes you from being on the show, so you give her a hundred dollar bill. And you're thinking, hey, it's not so bad. Like these seats are pretty spread out. But that's not the case in the back. So there's our spot. And you squeeze in. Stewardess comes out, gives the old rundown, a little bit of humor. Sitting next to you is, ironically, the guy from Leash Shoot Larry 1, where all you ever hear is the punchline. And I can tell I've forgotten something, because in order to get past this, you actually need a pamphlet. So we're going we're gonna to double time this one this time. Even faster than fast. We're going to get the insurance. Boom. Go buy this dang ticket. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm, that's great. Show the passport, zip along, ride the tram, there's my mind wandering, get the pamphlet, get the pamphlet. 
I can remember how to spell pamphlet, we'll get the pamphlet. There we go. All right. So now we give it to the ticket tour. Have a nice day. Let's try this again. So with the ticket, yeah, yeah, yeah. My high club. It's great. So once again, we squeeze into our seat. Stewardess comes out. Welcome board flight one, blah, blah, blah. So now we give the pamphlet to the guy. And now we're actually able to get out. So what you're going to do is you're going to use the pin on the door. And then we're going to put on the parachute that we got from the insurance. And then we're going to actually open the door. Or we're going to turn the handle to open the door. Give it a shove and you get sucked out. And you have to pull the cord before you leave the screen or use parachute. And as you can see, we're about to crash land in, in a familiar island that we saw in the introduction. So you get stuck up there, you use the knife, and you drop. And it turns out the thing that the chick gave you from the store has been smashed in the fall. So now the microfish will never fall into the wrong hands. So unknowingly, you've done the world of service. So now we're going to get the stick, which we're going to need fairly soon. And you can see there's something in the tree, and if you try to get by it, you, uh, you get killed. I cannot emphasize how much you want to save in this game, and not even save over your existing games. As you can see, I've already messed up several times. You want to do as many new saves as you can, because this game is brutal. Now you can see something in the tree, like, I was easily noticing something was weird in that tree. And it mentions that there's a boa up there, so try to get around it, and you can't, so what you have to do is use the stick. And as you do, you insert it into its mouth. It's totally embarrassed that it's been defeated and it slithers away. Now you see the monkey is walking on those steps, so you can see the light brown steps right there. That's the path you're going to want to follow. Again, this is another one where if you step off of it, you basically sink in quicksand and die. So and want to be very careful. I've changed directory to start making new saves. And as you can see, death is seconds away. So every once in a while, like when you reach a rock or like a somewhere near something where you've gotten kind of far, you'll want to save it. Now you see the vines, you're going to want to swing on the vines. You don't want to go in the water because it mentions like you're being nibbled on. And if you come out of the water, uh, it's basically a piranha have devoured you. And you're going to want to time this as when you say jump on vine, you're just going to want to hit F3 at, at the highest point. It's just like pitfall. And you're going to want to swing across. Leave this area and... Oh my god, she's topless. Think about how you've only seen this on National Geographic. She is stunningly beautiful. So, looks like you're both in love. Cupid, hearts, fireworks, the whole nine. You embrace and she's actually the one who lifts you in the kiss. So you find out she speaks English and that 
Dr. Nonuki is blocking like a agreement that allows hotels being built on the island, stuff like that. She says she wants to do it, but she has to get married first. In order to do that, you have to be brought before her father and the tribal elders. And apparently Dr. No Nonuki has hypnotized and enslaved some women. And like I said, he's prevented them from building a casino, resort, hotel complex. So you say, I have an idea. Why don't I put a stop to him? We can get married. So you go to the island, or you go to uh, the chief. She says, well, I have to go speak to daddy. My hero. So out comes none other than what I assume to be, uh, based on his name and his appearance from Lee Larry One, Ken Williams, in a uh, Hawaiian clothes. And he says in order to do it, you must program some software. So you sit down. There's nothing for you to do. You just watch this scene. This random code goes by. And you successfully coded something. So he says, okay, well now you have to rid the island of Dr. Nonuki. He says something like, over there is the way to the volcano. Uh, you just have to pass the ice uh, glacier and this cliff. Oh, by the way, have a nice day. So obviously to get across the cliff, we're going to probably use a vine, which I forgot to grab. So we're also going to need some ashes. Grab that. We're also going to need some sand. So grab that. And this is all stuff that if you don't grab initially, you're going to dead end. Because after you swing on the vine, the branch does break and the vine goes away. So you have no way to get back. So again, this game does try to dead end you quite a bit. And I would recommend saving because as you'll see, I die plenty of times by stepping too far. And I finally make it. I always felt like there was something here on the screen that was just wanting to kill me, but I could never find it. Everything just seems to be, this just seems to be a screen that is an in-between screen, which is very rare in Sierra games. If you try to climb up the ice, it won't let you. So you're gonna have to do something to basically melt the ice and you still have the warm ashes from the uh, bonfire and it reveals um, freezer coils, which is what's creating that glacier. So you climb it up, and you make your way up. So if you look through the hole, I mean, those clouds look like a woman's boobs. They were smiling, but apparently not. So now we've made it to the top. Matches, hair rejuvenator, and sand. And I realize I've forgotten something again. What I've forgotten, so we're gonna double time this again. Get the pamphlet, go back a ticket zip through this real quick show the passport go go show her the ticket get on the plane yeah 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 it's great I'm gonna sit down she does her thing all right what we need to do is we show in the pamphlet and we need to get the airbag out of the back of the seat 
So once again, fall, parachute, use the knife, get the stick, climb under the bush, use the stick, follow the monkey path, swing on the vine, swing on the vine, grab a vine, see her again. Do this whole part again. All right, you can even see the helicopter flying by. So now we're going to save ashes. We're going to get sand. Go back up here, save. First try, swing across. Use the ashes. Climb up, flip through, nothing there. Now, there is a part here where if you phrase it incorrectly, it does drop the bottle down the crevice before you're ready. So you're going to get the bottle, put the airbag in it, light the airbag, and then drop the bottle down the hole. And that creates a massive explosion that seems to open the elevator. And you notice that the elevator is not there, and you seem to plummet to your death, but you don't. And there's a woman playing the piano with four enslaved women. You hit it, you spin, you high-five that hand, which triggers something else. The machine gun starts firing, you dodge it, grand piano falls on no Nuki. And then Nuki starts to go to heaven, but then gets dragged to hell. The native women have been freed and returned to their natural cause of taking off their clothes, or at least their tops. And then you dial in. The news crews agrees to pick you up. Say if you can create some kind of signal to let me know where you are. You push a couple buttons and create a signal. And you turn to the piano player and she says, My name is Patty, Polyester Patty. And could that be a thing for Lucy Larry 3? Yes. And they drop you, the fog is going in and out, the waterfall stops, you roll down the hill. The women go out another way, and you go into the helicopter. And they recognize you from the lottery show. But they tell you that the lottery show has gone kaput, so you won't be getting a million dollars for the rest of your life. But you have love. What does it matter? So she goes to get her father and the rest of the people from the tribe, you head over there to get married. And the ceremony begins, you walk down, the witch doctor is there, Chief Ken leads, you, leads your wife to you, and there you are. He says you must spin. smash the wedding cake in each other's face and as part of the process you have to moonwalk and now you are part of the tribe and officially married he says walk this way dips your head turns you into a rabbit a jackass a rabbit and back to you but look you have hair now your dreams of running naked have come true and the volcano erupts or is that you erupting will we find out about passionate patty or polyester patty as you do your thing in the sand it's getting awkward now. 
really awkward. Okay, let's just end this now.